If you call someone a selfish person, you're probably trying to insult them. The Cambridge University Dictionary defines the word selfish as caring only about yourself and not other people. But why does working for your self-interest and not others have to be always necessarily morally wrong? And here we're not talking about going out of your way to harm others or being a psychopath. It might sound counterintuitive and against all what society want us to believe, but constantly prioritizing other people's needs above your own is probably a big reason why you're not living the life you want. I've long viewed putting yourself first as inherently selfish and wrong. The idea of prioritizing your own needs over others seems to go against being a caring, empathetic person. Doesn't the famous saying go, no one ever became poor by giving? However, the reality is more nuanced. Selfishness exists on a scale, not as an absolute. It's overly simplistic to think you're either completely selfish or completely selfless. In truth, there are two unhealthy extremes. On one end, you have the entirely self-absorbed person who exploits and harms others for their own benefit. This self-serving disregard for others is indeed toxic and no way to build meaningful connections. But then, there's the opposite extreme. Those who subjugate their own needs and identity to an unhealthy, self-negating degree. While putting others first is often praised, doing so excessively can breed resentment, burnout, and a loss of self. From childhood, we're conditioned that good people prioritize others. Share your toys, wait your turn, don't be selfish. These are the lessons for getting along in society. The underlying message is that we must sometimes suppress our own wants for the greater good. No wonder selfishness gets perceived as this moral failing to be eliminated. However, many thinkers have challenged this notion, like the writer Ayn Rand. She argued that when channeled properly, a healthy self-interest is actually vital for human potential, not something we should reject. As Ayn wrote, man, every man, is an end in himself, not a means to the ends of others. He must live for his own sake, neither sacrificing himself to others nor sacrificing others to himself. He must work for his rational self-interest with the achievement of his own happiness as the highest moral purpose of his life. Rand's quote is often mistaken as a call for pure selfishness at the expense of all others. But what she meant is rejecting the idea of total self-sacrifice and self-negation. Her philosophy centers on pursuing your own ethics, happiness, and self-actualization, not in a way that deliberately exploits or harms others, but in a way that allows you to show up in life as your fullest, most authentic self. And that leads us to the first benefit of being more selfish. One major benefit of embracing selfishness in a healthy way is that you'll get to know the real you, your authentic wants, needs, and core values. Too often, we get so caught up in people-pleasing and making sure everyone else is happy that we lose touch with our own inner voice. We spend most of our time trying to fit an image of who we think we should be instead of just being ourselves. But when you give yourself permission to consider your self-interest first sometimes, you're forced to turn inward and strat to think, what do I really want here? Despite external pressures, which of these choices would most align with my personal principles? Putting your foot down and honoring your true self develops a greater self-awareness and you'll start to realize that some long-held beliefs no longer resonate. A little selfishness creates the space for that honest self-discovery and realignment to take place. When we constantly defer to others at our own expense, it starts to chip away at our sense of self-worth. We begin to feel like a doormat, taken for granted, 
and our own dreams and boundaries get deprioritized. But standing up for yourself, even in small ways, reminds you that your feelings and needs actually matter. You're not just a people-pleasing robot. You have a voice deserving of being heard. Advocating for the things that are important to you builds confidence and inner strength. You respect yourself more for walking your ethical talk. Your self-esteem gets a boost from saying, this is who I am and what I want, versus when you suppress yourself to gain approval. At the end of the day, we want to create the life we want rather than living for others' expectations. Let's face it, many of us, myself included, sleepwalk through life on autopilot more often than we'd like to admit. We get locked into the same old routines without questioning them. Wake up, scroll social media, go to work, come home and binge Netflix, mindlessly snack, sleep, repeat. It's easy to fall into these numbing cycles, especially if we're just going through the motions, living for others' expectations instead of our own desires. When constantly reacting to work emails, spending hours passively consuming content suggested by algorithms, we lose touch with what we actually want for ourselves. But injecting a dose of selfishness, consciously prioritizing your individual wants and needs, can jolt you out of that trance. Choosing to log off and be present in the moment, even briefly, interrupts the autopilot program. You don't have to constantly check your social media feeds and doom scrolling, respond to emails at 2 a.m. Being a little selfish with your time and priorities can be an act of self-care. Instead of mindlessly following the group, think, do I actually want to go to that social gathering or am I just attending out of obligation or fear of missing out? Constantly putting others first is actually one of the biggest relationship pitfalls. We've all been there, going overboard with favors, compromising our own needs, and bending over backwards, trying to please everyone around us. The truth is, when we put others before ourselves, it's often because we secretly want something in return, like their love and approval. But ironically, all this people-pleasing usually breeds the opposite of healthy connections. When you suppress your personal wants, resentment starts building. You begin feeling unappreciated, used, and taken for granted by the very people you're killing yourself for. Because what you call selfless acts often expect something in return, whether it's approval, love, or them returning the favor down the road. This dynamic is toxic and prevents genuine connection. The path to a better, more fulfilling bonds is counterintuitively through healthy selfishness. Real friends don't actually want a yes man. They want you, the authentic, imperfect, yet confident version of yourself. When you call for your needs, voice your truth, and set boundaries, you essentially commanding more respect. When you say, this is who I am, this is what I want and what I don't. You filter out the wrong relationships and strengthens the right ones. Your loved ones get to see the unapologetic, self-assured you. And you get to feel accepted for your whole self, not just the version shaped by what you give to others. Paradoxically, putting yourself first fosters connections free of expectations or concealed desires. You share from a place of abundant generosity not depleted obligation. It's similar to the instructions they give you on airplanes. Secure your own oxygen mask before assisting others. Nobody calls that selfish because you can't help someone else if you're gasping for air yourself. That's the true essence of selflessness. Prioritizing your core by sorting out your own values first. This way, you can deliver your best self in your important relationships.